Okay, in our video series of Neurology Lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about facial palsy and Bell's palsy. We are going to discuss the presentation, the causes and management of facial palsy in detail. We are also going to discuss the difference between facial and Bell's palsy. First of all, a 32-year-old man comes to your clinic and tells you that doctor, when I woke up in the morning, I could not feel the right side of my face. I felt that my right side of face was numb. When I went to drink a glass of water, I felt that my water was coming out from the right side of my mouth. My wife saw me, she told me that my right side of the face was not moving. When I saw myself in the mirror, I saw that my right side of the face was paralyzed. This is a case of facial palsy. Now, when this patient comes to your clinic and you ask the patient to make facial expression, you ask the patient to smile. And when the patient smiles, this is how the patient looks. Look at the right side of the face, the absence of wrinkles on the forehead, the absence of nasolabial fold, the drooping of right side of the face and nose. Right side of the face is expressionless because the facial muscles are not moving while the left side is totally fine. The muscles are contracting and you are looking at the facial expressions the patient is having facial palsy. Now remember, the difference between facial palsy and Bell's palsy is that facial palsy is a bigger term. It's an umbrella term. Bell's palsy is a type of facial palsy. Facial palsy can occur due to simple infection, inflammation. It can occur due to tumor. It can occur due to stroke. There are many causes of facial palsy. But when the cause is idiopathic and we do not know the cause, that is called as Bell's palsy, idiopathic. And remember, there are two types of facial palsy. One is upper motor neuron facial palsy. The second one is lower motor neuron facial palsy. We are going to discuss about that in a while. But remember for now that Bell's palsy is mostly lower motor neuron type facial palsy and patient recover from it. Within a few weeks, patient fully recover from it. It's idiopathic. So facial palsy has many types. Bell's palsy is one type of facial palsy. Facial palsy can be due to tumor, stroke and uh, the, it can also be permanent while Bell's palsy is temporary. Now we'll discuss the causes and presentations and this point will be more clear for you. Now remember facial nerve palsy is partial or total loss of function of facial nerve. Now, we'll divide the face into two halves, the upper half of the face and the lower half of the face. Remember, there is a facial nucleus. Facial nerve nucleus is lying in the brain stem. That facial nerve nucleus is also divided into two halves, upper half and lower half. The upper half of the facial nerve nucleus supplies the upper half of the face and the lower half of facial nerve nucleus supplies the lower half of the face. And remember, the upper half of the face receives its nerve supply from both sides of the cortex. The upper half of the face, the upper part of the facial nucleus is receiving upper motor neurons from both sides of cerebral cortex. So it is receiving nerve supply from two upper motor neurons. These are the upper motor neurons and the Neurons that are arising from the facial nucleus and supplying the face, they are the lower motor neurons. So, there are two upper motor neurons supplying the upper half of the face and one lower motor neuron. Now, coming to the lower part of the face. The lower part of the face and lower half of the facial nucleus has single supply. It has a single upper motor neuron supply and that is from the contralateral cortex. The lower half of the facial nucleus receives a single upper motor neuron supply and that lower half then gives a lower motor neuron and that lower motor neuron supplies the lower half of the face. So lower half of the face has supply from contralateral cortex and a single upper motor neuron is supplying it. While the upper half of the face is receiving supply from two sides, two upper motor neurons are supplying it. 
Now this is a simple diagram to make you understand that how upper part of the facial nucleus that is supplying the upper half of the face is receiving bilateral upper motor neuron supply and lower half of the facial nucleus that is supplying the lower half of the face is receiving a single supply and that single supply is from the contralateral side. So remember this is the upper motor neuron and this is the lower motor neuron. The whole purpose of making you understand it is that whenever there is lesion in the upper motor neurons, the lower side of the face will be paralyzed. The lower part of the face will be paralyzed because it has a single upper motor neuron supply and that upper motor neuron supply has been cut off. That single upper motor neuron supply has been cut off and the lower part of the face will be drooping. There will be drooping of the face. The nasolabial fold will be absent. But the upper part of the face is spared. Upper part of the face is normal. Why is the upper part of the face normal? Because it is receiving two nerve supplies. One has been cut off but the other one is still there. So the upper half of the face is receiving two nerve supplies. One has been cut off but the other one is still there. Other one is still supplying it. So the upper part of the face is spared. In such patients what you would see in, in patients with upper motor neuron lesion what you would see is that these patients will be having normal forehead normal eye their eyelid their eyelid won't be drooping but their lower half of the face will be affected they will they will be having drooping of the face they will have, be having absence of nasolabial fold but their eye and forehead will be spared only this part of the face is affected now coming to lower motor neuron lesion whenever there is lower motor neuron lesion now the nerve supplying the upper part of the face and the nerve supply the lower part of the face both of them have been cut off in lower motor neuron lesion the whole one side is affected in such patients the eyes will be also be affected the wrinkles on the forehead will also be absent there will be drooping of the mouth there will be absence of nasolabial fold so one whole side is affected so the take home message is if the upper motor neuron is damaged lower half of the face is damaged but the upper half of the face is spared in lower motor neuron lesion the whole one side is affected now this is a picture showing lower motor neuron lesion in this picture you can see the whole one side of the face is affected in this picture you can see there is loss of forehead wrinkling the forehead wrinkles are absent if you ask this patient to close both eyes his this eye will close but this eye will stay open because orbicularis oculi cannot contract because facial nerve supply is gone. Look at the loss of nasolabial fold, look at the mouth droop. So one whole side is affected that is the lower motor neuron lesion. Now we will look at the upper motor neuron lesion. In this patient, in this patient you can see the forehead wrinkles are present. And if you ask this patient to close both eyes, his both eyes will close normally. But this patient is having facial palsy because there is loss of nasolabial fold, there is mouth droop. So this half of the face is affected but the upper half of the face is spared. That is an upper motor neuron lesion. So this, this is the difference between lower motor neuron lesion and upper motor neuron lesion. Now when you understand this concept, you can easily understand the causes. Now we will go into the causes of upper motor and lower motor neuron lesions. Upper motor neuron lesion usually have a central cause. The cause is within the brain. It is also called as central facial palsy. In lower motor neuron it is called as peripheral facial palsy because cause is outside the brain when the nerves are coming out, when the lower motor neurons are coming out of the brain stem. In upper motor neuron it is easy to guess. It is most likely due to stroke. It can be due to tumor. So the cause is central, the cause is in upper motor neurons within the brain. In lower motor neuron the cause is peripheral, it can be due to any infection outside. The patient had a sinus infection, patient was having flu for a few days and now that patient has developed paralysis of one side of the face. It can be due to infection, herpes infection can cause it, many viruses can cause it. And most commonly we do not know the cause, it is an idiopathic 
and that idiopathic peripheral facial palsy or idiopathic lower motor neuron palsy is the type that we call bell's palsy so that's the difference between facial palsy and bell's palsy facial palsy is a general term a general umbrella term bell's palsy is a type of facial palsy and this specific type is bell's palsy herpes zoster infection lyme disease or titus externa infection these infections can cause facial palsy trauma or temporal bone fracture can cause facial palsy if you have ever seen malala talking malala yousafzai the nobel laureate you can see that her one side of the face is not moving properly it's because she got a bullet that damaged the facial nerve now this is another chart to make you understand the difference between upper motor and lower motor neuron lesion now the basic purpose is to understand the cause in upper motor neuron the cause is more concerning the cause is stroke the cause is tumor the causes are bigger the causes are more serious in lower motor neuron lesion the causes are treatable mostly the causes are reversible so if you understand the whole pathology everything makes sense in central palsy or upper motor neuron lesion the ability to frown will be intact because upper part of the face is not affected in lower motor neuron the whole one side is paralyzed it's absent closing eyelids intact in upper motor neuron and it is absent in lower motor neuron because one side is whole affected in lower motor neuron so everything will be absent mouth drooping will be present in both of them so it's a simple chart to make you understand now coming to sensory disturbance remember whenever these patients of facial palsy they get uh, a facial palsy they do not realize that their one side of the face is paralyzed until and unless someone tells them or they look in the mirror what they can feel is that they will tell you that my right side of the face is feeling numb i cannot feel the right side of my face and when someone looks at them they'll tell them that uh, your right side of the face is not moving properly something is wrong with you you should see a doctor so that's the presentation of facial palsy my father also got affected from bell's palsy recently and uh, one morning he called me and he told me that uh, vakas i cannot feel the right side of my face then i asked about various symptoms whether he was having numbness in the right side of the body everything was normal he was just having numbness on the right side of the face i asked him to do a video call and when he uh, started the video call and i looked at his face my first impression was the facial palsy because his when when he was talking when he was telling and when he himself looked his uh, face into the video call he realized that his right side of the face was not moving properly he is totally okay now he fully recovered from it it was basically a bell's palsy lower motor neuron lesion that had affected the whole one side there will be sensory disturbance impairment of the taste in anterior two third of the tongue remember anterior two third of the tongue is supplied by corda tympani a branch of facial nerve so the facial nerve is damaged that will result in uh, ab absence of taste sensation there will be hyperacusis remember a small muscle stapedius muscle a very small muscle is supplied by facial nerve and if that small muscle gets contracted it will accelerate the sound it will amplify the sounds and there will be hyperacusis now this small muscle will play havoc with your ear there will be painful sensation around and behind the ear because some part of external ear tube is supplied by facial nerve eye involvement in these patients when you ask these patient to close their eyes these patients won't be able to close the eyes there will be lag of thalamus patient cannot fully close the eye so always ask this patient to close the eyes you will it will become more prominent for you because orbicularis oculi cannot contract and the eyes will stay open and remember there is a risk that these patients will be having dry eyes now the lacrimal glands the glands that produce tears they are also supplied by facial nerve so the secretions will also be low there will be dryness of eye the eyes are open so there is high risk that these patients will develop keratitis inflammation of the cornea will discuss in the treatment will manage the eye section properly there is a phenomena called as bell's phenomena in bell's phenomena what happens is that normally it's a protective phenomena that whenever we close our eyes the eyeball moves upwards so this is a physiologic phenomena physiologic movement of eyeball upwards and outwards that occurs when eyelid is closed so these patients cannot close their eyelid so you can appreciate that their eyes are moving upward 
the cornea is going upward and outward so that is called as a bell's phenomena it's a physiologic phenomena but you can appreciate it just because they cannot close the eyelid so you can see that the eyeball is moving upward that is called as bell's phenomena now coming to the diagnosis remember diagnosis of facial palsy is a clinical diagnosis you take the medical history you do the examination and in the examination you realize that that patient is having facial palsy but remember always uh, uh, rule out more sinister more evil causes always perform complete neurological examination in these patient because these uh, this can be a part this can be a presentation of a stroke this can be a presentation of a tumor so you have to ask about the symptom onset whether the symptom onset was sudden if the symptom onset is sudden it's reassuring but if the symptom onset is slow and gradual over weeks and months that is concerning that is that points out toward diagnosis like malignancies you exa examine the patient you ask the patient to close the eyes you ask the patient to frown you ask the patient to blink you ask the patient to whistle you ask the patient to inflate their mouth like this you ask the patient to show their teeth you ask the patient to grimace so you ask the patient to perform all these and then you make a diagnosis that whether it is upper motor neuron or it is lower motor neuron always perform complete neurological exam in these patients now coming to the treatment and management steroids short term glucocorticoid therapy is recommended for all patients since it is associated with inflammation and damage of the facial nerve we give steroids so that inflammation is reduced so that the damage of the facial nerve is reduced and it produces remarkable improvement in the patient and it should be started as earlier as possible as soon as you diagnose the patient you should start glucocorticoids start within 3 days and the dose is oral prednisone 60 to 80 mg per day for one week without tapering tapering can also be done but it can it can be given without tapering if you want to taper the dose what you do is that you give 60 mg for 5 days and then you give 10 mg for the next 5 days but even if you give it without tapering there is no risk of addison or uh, glucocorticoid deficiency or cortisol deficiency in this patient because the course is very short side effects of steroids is sleep disturbance and dyspepsia now coming to antiviral therapy no remember as i said that bell's palsy the most common cause is idiopathic you don't know the cause but when you have ruled out the more bigger sinister causes uh, then infection is one of the likely cause of uh, bell's palsy herpes zoster infection so antiviral therapy is not recommended in all cases because we do not know that what's causing the bell's palsy but when you are suspecting that that patient might be infected with a virus or uh, that patient is having very severe facial palsy that is not responding to glucocorticoids so you add antivirals so that even if there is a virus you kill that virus uh, it these are used with steroids steroids are the must steroids there is uh, antivirals cannot replace steroids steroids are the must for facial palsy but in severe facial palsy you can add antiviral therapy you can use valacyclovir 1000 mg 3 times daily for one week it is preferred over a cyclovir a cyclovir 400 mg can also be used 5 times a day for 10 days eye care is most important these patients cannot close the eyes their eyes are dry because lacrimal glands is also supplied by facial nerve and the eye is dry now during the waking hours you advise them to use artificial tears 4 to 6 times daily they can also tape the eye to keep it closed eye patches are not recommended remember uh, these eye patches they do not close the eye actually if someone wants to use the eye patch what they can use is they can tape their eye close and then over that they can use the eye patch single uh, uh, eye patches do not close the eye they just hide the eye during the sleep hours they can use a medical grade waterproof transparent tape or a dressing like this in the follow up usually recovery takes almost 3 weeks to 3 months so even if some there is some residual deficit of facial palsy till 3 uh, months it's normal after 3 months it's concerning that 3 months have passed and still the patient has not recovered from facial palsy in that case you need to investigate but it almost takes 3 weeks to 3 months to fully recover to uh, to have a fully functional facial nerve 80 to 85% patients fully recover that's a very good thing about facial palsy that uh, it's a very dreadful thing but there is a very good chance of recovery in these patient if there is no bigger sinister cause 
in severe cases where these glucocorticoids and uh, antivirals have been given and still the patient is having severe contracture of face severe spasm of the facial muscle in such cases you can use botox induction botulinum toxin injections that can relax these muscles ask the patient to return to hospital if they experience worsening of weakness after three weeks now remember as soon as the facial part palsy starts there is slight numbness and then the, it progresses the disease progresses it worsens and it re re reaches its peak in uh, two to three weeks but after that there is a recovery phase now after three weeks if still there is worsening of the symptoms it means that there is something concerning or if this if, if there is a history of slow progressive disease in that case you need to do imaging if the patient develops diplopia or ataxia in such cases you need to do mri to uh, exclude any malignancy tumor stroke as a cause coming to the complications of facial palsy in the complications 15 percent of the patients will develop synkinesias and contractures what is synkinesias this is due to uh, abnormal innervation because nerve is recovering and that recovery of the nerve can cause abnormal functioning that results in twitches and involuntary contracture of the facial muscles that occurs in 15 percent of the patients free syndrome is a very rare complication now remember that when the facial nerve is recovering during the recovery process this facial nerve normally supplies the submandibular gland and produces salivation during the recovery process what happens is that this facial nerve sometimes joins certain nerves with it the nerves that are that are responsible for sweating so a combination of nerve is formed and when the patient is trying to eat something the facial nerve stimulates the salivation and with salivation there is also sweating so the person will complain that whenever i try to eat something i am sweating at the same time gustatory tearing or crocodile tears it has the same phenomena due to abnormal recovery of the facial nerve uh, salivation when the patient eats something the patient starts crying so gustatory tearing or crocodile tears before going into the summary if you are new to this channel please click on the subscribe button we talked about what is facial palsy we talked about the difference between upper motor and lower motor neuron lesion we talked about the causes of upper motor and lower motor neuron lesions in facial palsy we talked about the eye involvement, Bell's phenomena, leg, leg of thalamus, dry eyes. We talked about the diagnosis with medical history and examination. We talked about steroids as a main therapy of treatment, antiviral in severe cases where you suspect infection, eye care during the day hours and the sleep hours and follow up of the patient and the complications. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on neurology lectures and emergency medicine lectures. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.